watching us online, wherever you're watching from, we welcome you this morning. Pray that you're blessed by this service. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I have I've used these verses several times in the last several months and uh, felt drawn back to use them this morning, perhaps maybe in a little bit different context. I'll read two verses and then you can be seated and we'll go from there. 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 7. Oh, will start with verse 6. Why not 5? For we preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves. This has absolutely nothing to do with where I'm about to go or where the Lord, I believe, is going to take us. But it's really easy nowadays through social media to preach yourself. It's completely free. But Paul said, We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. You know, it's kind of hard to have some, some of the issues that often happen in church when, when you see yourselves as servants. For Jesus. Now, unless I'm missing it, I don't see any first time guests this morning. And uh, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, everybody I see this morning, you've, you've been here several times at least. So I'm not going to preach to those that aren't here. I'm going to preach to those that are here. <laughs> Ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. You notice that? Man, I can't even get to where. He didn't command the light to shine into the... That's pretty amazing. He shined it out of the darkness. Hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I guess maybe if nothing else this morning, just for the media department's sake, my title is Break down or break out. Break down or break out. God, thank you for the privilege of joining together. Thank you for the time that you blessed us with this week. I hope and pray that every person here has had over the last several days some moments of fellowship and rest and peace. Thank you for everything you've done for us. We pray, God, now that you would minister, continue to minister in this service this morning. We're not here, God, just to punch the clock and put in our time because that's what we're supposed to do. We're here to encounter you, your presence, your word, your spirit. So I trust that you would continue to minister through your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ trust you this morning for your anointing and depend on you, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The word earth in there in the Greek basically means just clay pot, a clay vessel. I I preached over the last couple of months several times, a couple of Sunday nights ago, in fact, used these verses, and I referenced being earthen vessels, and I will 
perhaps read them in a few minutes, but one of these verses says that we are cast down, but we are not destroyed. And so the earthen vessel in the context of us today, what, what is a little more relative to us today in, in this context is just a, it's a paper cup or a plastic bottle. It's, it's something that's not considered to be of great value and worth. And so the, the significance is not the vessel, it's what's in the vessel. The importance is not the vessel itself, it's what gets put inside of the vessel. And, and so, again, over the last couple of months, a couple of different times, different places, I have used that analogy, but I, I want to I go to the other end today. <laughs> because the context of an earthen vessel implies something that in fact is fragile. Come back in a couple of months, I'll probably throw a water bottle down again and tell you that an earthen vessel doesn't break, but that's not today. He says, we've got this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power, it's not of us, it's not about us, it is what is in us. And I can either break down in what I'm going through or I can allow the Spirit of the Lord to empower me to break out of it. I can either, anybody, else, you, don't have to, you don't have to respond. I know, I know none of you have these anymore. You're just your children. But anybody ever have a meltdown? You ever seen somebody have a meltdown? They've had a breakdown. You know, you usually break down in your circumstances. You break down in the situation. But I've come to tell somebody today, I think we're going to get to this point, but I don't know because I feel like, and it's going to require a little bit of vulnerability on somebody's part, I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to touch somebody this morning beyond what's already happened here today. But... You don't have to just break down in what you're going through. It's the will of God for you to break out of it. But again, Paul says, we've got this treasure in an earthen vessel. A, a, a vessel that is not necessarily... Again, forget the plastic water bottle a couple weeks ago for this morning. <laughs> We've got it in a vessel that may not be the most durable. It may not be the most reliable. It may not be able to handle the most wear and tear. And therefore, the excellency of the power is not of the vessel. It is what is in the vessel. We, uh, some of you know this or by various means by now, but if you don't know this, my, uh, after 27 years of marriage, this was the first time ever in 27 years that we ever had Thanksgiving dinner at our house that we actually hosted our own Thanksgiving dinner. We have spent most of those years at either most of the time at other family, my parents or my wife's side of the family, and a few times, two or three times, I think, out of town. And so, but we have literally never had Thanksgiving dinner at our house. And so this year was, was the first. And, and uh, we were very excited about that. But there was one sort of, uh, for, for both my wife and I, a little bit of a, of a cloud that was kind of hanging over that because it was going to be our first one. And Timothy was in California. And, uh, but it was what it was. And, uh, I, I got a text from my dad on, on, uh, Wednesday. He said, uh, can you, can, since we're not going to be together tomorrow, your mother and I would like to just come by and see you guys for a few minutes. And, and, uh, we, we got a housewarming gift he, we'd like to drop off. We've just pretty much finished up our addition. So I kind of made sense. So. 
all right. And then we worked on a time, and then he texted back, and we changed that some. And so the next Thursday morning, they, they came, uh, came over. My brother and his wife, their kids came over and all walked in. We're happy Thanksgiving and hugging. And he said, well, let me go back to the car and get the housewarming gift. And he goes back out, and just so happens the housewarming gift turned out to be Timothy. So they had worked and schemed to get Timothy here, and uh, wow, what an absolute treat. And he's not here this morning because he's leaving this afternoon, and he wasn't quite prepared. So, But wow. And I got to tell you, it's been a very enjoyable, wonderful couple of days. We've had some just great time together as a family. But i kind of been burdened for something in the midst of all of that, the pastor's side of me, because I acknowledge quickly that's not everyone's experience. That's not everybody's reality, if you will. In fact, there are some people here today, and I don't know how far we'll go with this, because, again, I'm not kind of up to you. I don't, I don't, I don't, there, I literally, this, I don't know when the last time I've ever done this, I have no notes on my iPad, I've got no, I, all I have is these verses, so I'm not going to wow you with my eloquence today, not that I ever wow you with my eloquence. Hmm. I, 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 I've, in the midst of, the, uh, in the midst of enjoying my circumstances, there's, there's the other side of me because I don't look at my job. I don't look at being a pastor as a job. It is my calling. It's a part of my life. There's another part of me that not too far out of my conscious mind has been the understanding that there's some earthen vessels. And that either perhaps the last couple of days have reminded you of chips, not potato chips, cracks in your vessel. And probably, I, I've thought a couple of times over the last couple of days, I, I was thinking about it Thursday night. I, I've heard my wife has, has shared a few times a little bit of stories from her, her past and some of her family that's not in the church. And I mean, some of you, I don't respond. I'm not looking for answers. Um, but some of you, you know what it's like. You can't get together for something like a Thanksgiving deal without family ended up in a fight. <laughs> Hopefully just words, even though fists might do a little less damage than some of the words. <laughs> but earthen vessels that can be cracked and chipped. Perhaps even broken to pieces. But oh, my friend. The Bible says in, in the book of Jeremiah, I believe it is when the Lord told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and watch him make a vessel. He says as, as the potter was making that vessel, it was, it was marred, it was, it was defective in his hands, but he did not disregard it. He did not simply throw it away and decide to go for another vessel or another lump of clay. The Bible says that he made it again. He made it again. <laughs> I forget what it's called. I, I, what's what's that? It's a, it's a, I believe it's a Japanese art, Japanese pottery where uh, they 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 fill in. They fill in the cracks with some gold or silver, and what what initially appears to be a negative, now gives the vessel greater value. 
Oh, can I tell you today, there's some of you that there you don't realize it perhaps yet, but there is a treasure inside of you that is filling in the gaps and filling in the holes, and your value is not diminished or decreased because of the chips in the vessel, but in fact, it's quite the opposite because you now have a treasure inside of you that gives you greater value than the, than the vessel itself. Bishop, my dad, Bishop Wright, I don't remember how old I was. I believe it was the mid-80s or somewhere in the 80s playing softball. This was a little bit before my time playing softball. And, and uh, he, was, he was running for, he was, he was on second base and, and he was, and there was, I believe, second base and, and uh, he was getting ready to go to third and they hit a ground ball uh, to that side, and so he was trying to time it to try to step over it and kind of distract the fielder and 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 all of that. Well, when he when he went to do that, the ball hit something, hit a rock or something, and took a bounce, and so he had to kind of unexpectedly attempt to jump a little bit higher than he had planned, and he tore, I believe, the growing muscle, basically completely tore it. Ended up at the doctor, and eventually, if I remember the way the story goes, I know the gist of it, but may not get every single detail. Asked if surgery was going to be needed. The doctor said no. He said blood will fill in that gap, and that blood will become what is needed. And I think if I remember the story correctly, Bishop asked the doctor and said, how does that happen? And the doctor responded and said, you're the preacher. <laughs> Can I tell you today, as it is in the natural, not only is it in the spiritual, but to a degree I would say even more so, that there is, there is a, there is a, there, there is a power of the Spirit of God to find those empty, broken, cracked places in your life and fill in those areas and become what is needed. And so that which the world tries to tell us takes away our value is actually what provides the opportunity to give us greater value because the excellency is not of me. It is of what dwells in me. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on, let's just, just take, come on. I'm not here to just sermonize. I, I'm not ever to try to do that, but I, I just really believe the Holy Ghost wants to, I don't care if I don't go another moment. I don't care if I don't preach another word. If I need to, I will, but I just believe the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost wants to minister to somebody this morning. Some of you, you're feeling the pressure and the weight of, of the circumstances and the situation. I mean, let, me, let me read on for a moment. This is, this is such an interesting passage to me in a lot of different ways. But Paul, he, he, we got this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. And, and then listen to what I mean. I, none of us really want to be in this, what Paul describes in these next couple of verses. This is not the way we, this is not what we want. This is not what we want to, this is not the description we want. However, the only way to really know the power of the treasure that is in you is it's got to, it's got to be tested. So he says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We, we are perplexed, but not in despair. We, 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 we've, got, we, we've, got, we've got questions. We've got things we don't understand. We've got situations we can't figure out, but we're not, dis we're not in despair. 
We're not giving up hope. We're, we're, we're not throwing in the towel. I, I read it again this morning. I think I, I you referenced it recently, and I think I, I think I gave the wrong wrong prophet. It was Zechariah. Zechariah says uh, he refers to being a prisoner of hope. <laughs> a prisoner of hope. A prisoner, if I am a prisoner of hope, that means I am controlled by hope. Oh, hallelujah. Because whatever, it, whatever I am a prisoner of, that's what controls me. That's what manipulates me if you want. So you know what? If I'm going to be a prisoner of something, why not be a prisoner of hope? Why not let everything about me be controlled by hope? It doesn't look good right now, but I have hope. It doesn't seem good right now, but I have hope. It, I don't feel good right now, but I have hope. My circumstances don't look good right now, but I have hope. Paul said, tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience produces hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Can I say it this way? Hope doesn't disappoint. Now, now I, I know, I, I'm a, I, I, I don't, I, maybe just, uh, keep, you know, I keep getting riled up here. Let me just settle down for a moment. Y'all all right? We, we, we've got, we've got, there's a lot of different words, there's a lot of different concepts that obviously what they mean today is a little bit different than, than sort of the, the, the face value meaning in, in, in Scripture. Used this recently, I, but you know, we, there's, there's words like conversation. Paul tells Timothy that he needs to, that, that don't let anybody despise your youth, but be an example in your conversation. Well, we, I don't know about you, but conversation to me is basically two people talking. But that word conversation in the, in the Greek means your manner of life, your conduct. So that word means, every, that means be an example in everything. And, and I think we... With regards to the word hope, we kind of, in my opinion, we have kind of made that synonymous with a wish. It's kind of, isn't it crazy, the stuff we teach our kids? Okay, close your eyes before you blow out the candles and make a wish. And, 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 a wish, you know, that's something you want, something you like, but the reason it's a wish is because you're not necessarily totally expecting to get it. You are wishing for it. And I think we can, we can sort of use hope or we think of hope in a similar way. Anybody got anything you're hoping for? My word, I y'all are asleep, too much turkey, you're not listening, or you've got a really poor life, or I guess a great life because you're not hoping for anything else. Let's try that one more time. Anybody got anything you're hoping for? Okay. As I said it, pause. This is not a trick question. I am not setting you up. Let me ask now, now this is gonna take a little bit more transparency. How many of you have some things you're I mean, maybe you're really, really hoping for, but you're not necessarily really expecting to get them. Anybody? Come on, be there we are. Thank you. Because, and, and so that hope, well, I hope. I hope. That's not what the scripture is talking about when it's talking about hope. When Paul said, tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, and experience hope, he wasn't talking about this wishful desire. That word hope in the, king, in the Greek means a confident expectation. It is a confident expectation. So I may be troubled on every side. 
I may be perplexed. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I can't figure this out. But I am not in despair because I have a hope. And part of the foundation of my hope is all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It's not a wish, that's a hope that is built on something that is secure. Paul, uh, Paul, if you believe Paul wrote Hebrews, Paul says in Hebrews that hope is our anchor. It's what ties us down. It's, it's, you, have, you know what? If you can, get, you can get a boat out in a storm, you can get a boat docked, and the waves can be tossing and the wind can be blowing, and that boat may be going up and down. But it, if, it's, if it is firmly anchored, as long as it's firmly anchored, it's not going anywhere. Can I tell somebody today, you might ought to pause just for a moment and realize in the midst of your storm, in the midst of the winds and the ways. Look around and realize, you know what? I'm still anchored. I'm still got a hold to a hope that is sure. We, 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 so we bought a house last year, bought it with the intent from the, when we first bought it, the plan was to put an addition on it. And we've never some of you have lived through something like this before, but it's the first time we've ever lived through putting an addition on a house. And we were sitting in now what is uh, the, the family room, I think is what it's now. Is that the living room? For, I don't know, whatever. Hear you, hear you at the family room. We were sitting there the other night, and I, and I just <laughs> leaned over or looked over to my wife, and I said, just think, a couple of months ago, we, this was a bug-infested area. Because now what is a fully finished family room was a screened-in porch that was a breeding ground for spiders and insects and all kind of other critters. And it's kind of it was kind of interesting because thinking back over the last couple of months, we had to use our imagination to think about what was going to be. We had we had blueprints and we had plans. There was there was we could we could see the layout. It's kind of funny because when it was first the the, the slab was first poured and we were kind of looking at where the rooms were going. It, the weird thing. It, there, they, I'm I'm thinking there may be a message in this one day. So you just wait for it. But it looked small. The area that the living room was going, the family room, the area where the bedroom was going, it looked small. We're kind of like, what, 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 what have we done here? What's interesting is the more walls that were put up, the more you realize there was space. It's kind of interesting. This may be a part of the message one day. The enemy wants us to think we need to get rid of all the walls to give us space. Not understanding that God wants to build walls not to keep us hemmed in and prisoners, but to protect us. And there's actually more space and comfort within the boundaries that God sets up than there is without them. But now it's on the other side of it. Because I'm sitting there the other night in this finished living, sitting on the couch, and everything's in place, and I'm thinking, man, just a couple of months ago, I would not have been sitting here relaxing the way I am. See, I know some of you, you're living at the blueprint stage still. I know some of you are in the blueprint stage. That's where you are. I know that's where you are. (laughs) You know what the problem is with the blueprint stage? Two big words. I know you're not going to be familiar with these words at all, but what if? Usually followed in a lot of times, what if it doesn't happen? And and when we bought that house, 
and began to think about what we were going to build. What, but, but, but what if? What if it doesn't happen this? What if it never finished? What if this never? But we're not in despair. Because he is the author and the finisher. Hebrews 12 tells us he's the, he's the author and the finisher. The word author there in the English is spelled as the author of a book, but that's really not, and, and I've preached it that way before, and I think you can apply it that way, but really the word there, author, in the Greek means the originator. So he is the one who starts it. But not only does he start it, he is also the one who finishes. And Paul says this, He which hath begun a good work in you, he is able to perform it and he will perform it. Because whatever God starts, if you will allow him. Uh, I know that I said it. If you will allow him. The problem is there's a lot of things God starts, but people won't let him finish. And then we end up blaming him because he started, we interrupted, and he didn't finish. He is the author, the originator, but he is also the finisher. So you know what? You, you got the blueprint stage right now. You're in the blueprint stage. Everybody's telling you about those great, awesome blueprints, but what if? Hope. 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 Not wishing, not, not fantasy. I'm hope. Confident expectation. That one day, one day, one day, you're going to be in the finished family room. One day... This season is going to be a memory. And I believe this season is going to be a good memory. Because on the other side, when you're sitting in the finished family room, you're going to think back to those days with the what ifs and, 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 and what, what if this and what if it doesn't and what if, what if, shoulda, coulda, woulda. We are perplexed. I don't understand. I can't, but what, I'm not in despair. It's going to be all right going to be all right because God is in control. It's, it's not doesn't mean it's going to be easy every day. It doesn't mean every step is going to be easy, but it's going to be all right. I'm not perplexed. Uh, I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm not giving up hope because I know God started this and God is going to finish. Oh, hallelujah. Troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I'm not going to break down in my situation, because if I can just let the treasure that is in me work, I'm eventually coming out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of this. This is, not the, this is not the determining factor of the rest of my life. This is not my future. This may be my present, but this is not my future. Because I've got a treasure that has been put inside of me. And hear me, friends. God makes no mistakes about where He puts His treasure. Please tell me I, we, are not the only ones. Whoever, you put something in a specific place so you will know where it is for when you need it. I'm putting this right here so that when I need it, it's right here. Every now and then that happens and somebody comes along and moves it. But unfortunately, that's not usually my problem. My problem is not somebody moved it. It's the problem is where did I put it so I would know right where it was. Oh, 
I put it in exactly the place I would be able to go get put my hands on it when I needed it, but I don't know where it is. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus does not deposit something in you and then forget. Oh, my. Where did I put that? Who did I give that to? Or, or how about this? Why did I put that there? No. Never. Never. He said, I, I've got something. I've got a precious treasure, and I need some place to put it. I've got something. I, I, need, some, I need some vessels to keep it and I, I, I need to find vessels that I'm it's not about the vessel and the beauty of the vessel it's just about the fact I need a container in fact I don't really want a container that's going to get all the attention I don't want a container that's going to be the focus I want the focus to be what's in the container if we're not careful sometimes the struggle is uh, what about me no, it's not about you. It is about the treasure that is in the earthen vessel. Because the excellency of the power is Him, not you. He says, Hebrews tells us, the way the King James says it, it got all these double negatives in there and it really kind of makes it hard to read so I'll just say it the easy way we we have a high priest we have a god we have a heavenly father whatever other titles and 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 representations you want to use we have a god who is touched by the feelings of our infirmity there are, there, there, there are people in this, and this is primarily adults here, young adults and up. Youth are out, kids are out. There's people sitting in this room right now. Your only reference, basically, or your reference to a father or a mother with regards to how you feel and what you're going through is just something along the lines of just suck it up get over it or no hands needed no response no outward responses requested but some of you know get just get over it <laughs> really brother shelton's one of the lines he always uses to imitate bishop <laughs> give me a break Do you, do you know, somebody hear me right now. I think I'm almost done. Hopefully Jesus isn't. You understand not one time has your heaven, heavenly Father ever looked back at you and thought, just get over it. Are you kidding me? Is that, you're, bo you're, you're, you're bothered by that? We have a high priest. We have a heavenly father who is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Meaning everything I have gone through and everything I am going through, he understands and he relates and he's there. Most of the time, he's helping me in ways I am not even consciously aware of. A treasure invested, deposited in an earthen vessel. I won't tell all. I'm kind of embarrassed. Not, my wife might be embarrassed by it too, so I won't tell the details. But this is the, not only being the first Thanksgiving, it was the first time I ever smoked a whole turkey on the green egg. And kind of figured out a little bit late in the game, I, I, I'm supposed to brine the turkey. 
Let me just say it this way. We did not have the proper vessels for the brining of the turkey. To all of you, family and other friends that came to eat, I won't tell you. doesn't matter now. You've already eaten. Oh, why not? Why leave you hanging? A clean, never used trash bag. Pour, put the turkey in there. Poured the brine in. Then we had, we had the bag. The turkey actually came in, wrapped that around it, and then had a, one of our Christmas bins. Was empty because the decorations were put up. So sat it down in there, filled it up with some cold water, and dumped some ice in it. I I didn't. That wasn't sitting out for all, all the guests to see. Because you know what we 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 have some concern about the vessel. Understandably so. You, you can go buy a perfectly brand new trash can today and never been used for anything and go use it, you know, for, 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 for holding your food. And everybody's like, well, it's, it's, pla- it's the same plastic that the plastic bowl's made out of. Because we, we tend to define the vessel by the vessel. Oh, hallelujah. We put emphasis on the vessel. But God's desire is to be the great equalizer. Because the bottom line is, Paul says that a great house has all kinds of vessels. It's got vessels of honor, vessels, it's got vessels of gold, it's got earthen vessels. And so the problem is if you were made to be a sterling silver vessel and I was made from pottery clay, I've got no hope. But God says, I don't want it to be about the vessel. Because not every vessel is going to be the same and not every vessel may come from the same materials. But I want it to be about the contents of the vessel. And so I'm going to take my contents of a treasure and put it in an earthen vessel. And what I want the vessel to be known by is not the material of the vessel. It's not the purpose of the vessel. But it is the contents of the vessel. So the excellency of the power, it's not you as the vessel. It's the treasure that's in. Years ago, years ago, the appropriate saying was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then years ago, when it was broke, you did fix it. Not anymore. There are so many things today that when they break, it is just as easy and perhaps cheaper to throw them away and buy another one. Just just take your typical household printer. (laughs) If you have a printer that breaks, you don't take it to the repair shop. Go in the trash, you go to Office Depot or Amazon. When's the last time your iron broke and you took it to the shop to get repaired? It's not even worth the hassle. Throw it away, run to Walmart. And there are so many things nowadays that that is the way we treat them. They break, get rid of them. I am afraid. I'm talking to mostly saints here today. I am afraid that's subconsciously what we anticipate from God. I live in a world where if it breaks, you throw it away. 
That's probably what God's going to do with me. If and or when I break, He will just throw me away. And that's really easy because there's seven billion more. He made that vessel and he saw that it was marred. And he did not reject and disregard the lump of clay. But he made it again another vessel. He made it again another vessel. Yesterday does not determine tomorrow. The past does not dictate what the future will be. Because I have a treasure that's not about me. It's not about what I am. It's not about who I am. It's not about what I've done. It's not about what I haven't done. It's not about what I can or cannot do. It's about the treasure. I, I just got a feeling there's, there's, there's perhaps at least a couple of people here. You're just in trouble, perplexed, persecuted, cast down, surrounded on every side by difficult, challenging situations and some of you feel like perhaps and from a natural perspective it would be normal to expect boy they're about to break down they're about to lose it any time now as simple as this is today the Holy Ghost has sent me to tell somebody it's not his intent for you to break down in the situation you're going through but to eventually come out of it, to break out of it. And the reason that's going to happen is because he has deposited a treasure in you. You just, for now, right where you're sitting, we're no, no movement at this point. No, we, may, we may do more in a moment, but just right where you're sitting. Again, I, I'm not trying to belittle me or the message. I, I understand I haven't come today with any kind of new, amazing, revelatory thoughts. But I do believe I've come, as simple as it may be, with a message from the Lord because there's, there's some vessels here today that He's... He's wanting to continue, not only continue to be the treasure in that vessel, but He's wanting to fill some of those gaps and holes and cracks, perhaps, that some circumstances and situations have caused. And I, I believe there's some people here, God wants you to walk out of this service today with hope. Again, not talking about a wish, not talking about wishful thinking, but a confident expectation that says God has got this and God's got me and God has invested something in me. And because of that, I may be troubled on every side. Everywhere I look, there may be issues and problems in my life, but I'm not being broken. I'm not being destroyed. I'm not being forsaken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I, I don't know who it is right now. But I do believe there's someone, perhaps more than just one person, that you would just like to fill in this morning some of those cracks and chips life has caused and you would like to pour in that treasure renew that treasure God that gives us the strength and the grace to be troubled on every side to be 
perplexed, not in despair. We may be persecuted, but we know you haven't forsaken us. We may be cast down by the circumstances and situations of our lives, but we're not destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Again, I... I, If I'm missing you as a first-time visitor or guest, please accept my apologies. I I don't necessarily see or know of any here right now, but I do believe the Holy Ghost would just like to touch somebody. If you don't, if you want to get up, if you if you feel a need right now, if you believe, if you know the Lord's talking to you and you feel a need to get up and you want to come to this altar, obviously you're welcome to do that, but rather than asking that right now here's what I really want to ask I want to ask somebody that maybe maybe this message this morning is more just a seed for you for the future it's not really where you are and what you need right now and so if that's the case would you would you then become a conduit would you then become a vessel that the spirit of the lord could minister through right now Come on, it, it may be, it may only just be one single person here today, but I believe the Holy Ghost wants to minister to somebody, has already, but wants to continue. In the name of Jesus, God, because of what you've put in us, because of the treasure, we're not going to break down where we are, we're not going to be destroyed by what we're going through, God. We're coming out of it. We're going to make it through it. God, I pray hope. I pray for hope to be renewed in somebody's heart and life today. Not not wishful thinking. Not just what we would think of as dreams or desires that are initiated from within us, God, but a confident, a confident expectation in who you are and what you're doing. In the name of Jesus, you're the originator, God. You're the originator, but you're also the finisher. Not only are you the one that starts it and the one that finishes it, but you're not going to give up on it in the middle of the process. You will not abandon. You will not neglect. You will not forsake what you have started. You will complete it. You will perfect what concerns me, God. Have your way right now, Jesus. Have your way right now, Jesus. Let that treasure, let that treasure work in every heart and every life in this place right now. Every flaw, every crack, every gap, and every vessel. Let it be filled in, God, by that treasure. You're not going to discard us. You're not going to abandon us not going to cast us aside because we're broke. You're not going to reject us. You're not going to throw us out into the junk pile. But with hands, nail-scarred hands, you're going to reach down and reshape and remold and bring about some healing and wholeness in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Alamando robo ko shataya la la bosataya. Ilamando robo ko seye alamando robo shatala ba. It's not about me as the vessel, God. It's not about my abilities. It's not about my qualities. It's not about my strengths, Lord. It's about what you have deposited in me, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come 
on, I realize this is not a there's not a bunch of demonstration. This is not a demonstrative moment. You may not be able to see it from where you are, but the Holy Ghost is ministering to some people right now. The Holy Ghost is doing something in some hearts and lives right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Aramando lo boche ye aramaki arata fa Let the treasure let the treasure work today Let that treasure that you have put within us strengthen empower in the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus Every wounded place, Lord. Every hurting heart right now, God. Take all of your hurting heart. Pour in. Take every calling. Let that treasure do what only it can do. God, I lose healing right now. I know you can heal the physical man, and I know we need that and we want that, but more than the healing of the physical man right now, I pray a healing of hearts, a healing of minds, a healing of spirits today. Jesus name take all of your hurt in Jesus name in Jesus name take every season e corrobo say ala la mando ropo ko shatala whenever you need to go or want to go you're welcome to take every color but again please be mindful of what the lord is doing be mindful 